Ken Hill, Ken Hill Coaching, and we're back with our series on uh, looking at some data. And in this part, uh, we are going to look at uh, pro rider versus more of an amateur racer um, and see how they compare. But this time it gets kind of cool because we'll actually be able to look at the, the throttle and brake graph and it'll help answer a lot more questions. So, hey, let's just let's just dive right into it. So <clears throat> let me bring up uh, these data points and we'll start here. So we'll start with the uh, we'll start with the speed graph uh, of just GPS speed because we still want to look at this and we still we, we could look at the throttle graphs and we could look at the brake graphs, but we need to know that the bike's in the right place and at least we're replicating um, the slowest points of the corners correctly. So this is a rider that we've worked with um, extensively. And even though there's um, a fairly a fairly good almost I think seven second um, difference in lap times, where does that come from right, how do I prove it's not just hey, dude you need to brake later, or you need to accelerate harder or you just need to pick up corner speed we want to have. We want to have real answers for these things and when we when we have the right information it really helps shortcut what's going on so we'll we'll see that this is a great example where it's just a little bit of a cumulative um, a cumulative um difference in the lap time so <clears throat> again let's start with some of the basic things one we need to make sure that we're apples to apples with our point of reference and here we're we're using pro rider versus an amateur racer um on the same bike uh, on the same day so yes it, it is relative in that regard and we that's something that we at least want to for these comparisons be really pinpoint uh, really be pointed about so all right, let's just uh, let's just sort of dive into it. <clears throat> okay, it starts off with since we have worked with this rider quite a bit. When we look at these slow points, dang, they're pretty good. We didn't really for this rider, we didn't really um, spend a bunch of time um, worrying about corner speed or entry speed because as we got their slow points right, and we did work on our our vision, um, these things sort of naturally uh, took care of themselves. But when we look at where the slow points are, we have a little bit of a big gap here, but the shape of this looks just looks fantastic. Um, it just all of these look really good. Same there, great slow point there, slow points excellent right there. <clears throat> a little bit early and long right there. When I say early and long, notice the difference between uh, the pro rider has a very V-shaped graph. And we have a little bit of a U-shaped graph right in there. We'll be and we'll be able to see that a little bit more on the data. Again, just just these are fantastic on by pinpointing these how much how much better this is. So let's talk about that a little bit further, which is when we have a more concise slow point like this, it makes it easier to add speed pause with less risk. Right. Instead of just saying, dude, you got to pick the throttle up more off the corner. Well, we need to make sure the bike is is pointed instead of telling the guy um, or, or gal, we just need to send it in there with more brakes. Again, we have to look at where the bike is slowed and pointed. And if we know that the bike is slowed, slowed and pointed at the right time, then we can safely add some of these next steps. So, yeah, I mean, this this just this starts off is is great. So then when we look at, OK, where are some of the improvements? And. You can see it by some of these gaps by <clears throat> seeing that, yes, we've got some bigger gaps uh, right in here, uh, a bigger gap right in here, uh, and then even some acceleration zone stuff right in here. So we'll just dive into those and uh, and see what we can come up with. So let's let's switch over to taking that a little bit further. And yeah, we can decipher what improvements need to be made by just using this if we wanted to. But we have the ability to look at further data, which is the throttle and brake on this on this particular bike. So let's dive. Let's dive into that. <clears throat> and, and and this really is what's going to help answer answer some more of these of these questions. So when we look at uh, we look at this, we've got the pro rider in blue. We've got the amateur racer in in red. And a lot of times it's it's it ends up being very, very simple. And it's it's something that we talk about is 
um, the rider who's at wide open throttle the longest, um, I mean, basically is gonna have the better lap time. And uh, the one that's either getting to full throttle the earliest or holding full throttle the longest, whatever that may be. So when we dive into some of this, um, we can kind of take it here by a little bit corner by corner. Turn one, we don't quite get to see the graph as well as we would like, but essentially, even though they had near the, the same top speed, uh, the bike sort of topped out at the same point, uh, the pro rider went to the brakes much, much later. And that's why we see the speed in here. What's also interesting is um, the novice rider used a little bit more brake pressure. So let's hang on a second. Let's make sure we understand it. This is our throttle graph. <clears throat> This is our, our braking graph. So the, the, um, the pro rider actually used slightly less brake, even though he went to the brakes a little bit later. So again, that's just that nuance of understanding how much brake you need for the particular corner, uh, for the, uh, that particular corner that you're, that you're coming to. So <clears throat> when we then go to look at some of these other aspects of it, is coming into the next corner. You can actually see that the, um, uh, the novice rider did a pretty good job with getting to full throttle. Um, of course, the pro rider was starting that from a much, much higher speed as, uh, as well. Uh, one thing that we could even dive into is gear position. And I know just from looking at this graph that the novice rider was in a taller gear than the, uh, the other rider. So that's why they're able to get the wide open throttle a little bit sooner. So then as we, as we come in here to the next corner, you can see that the pro rider holds the throttle on a little bit longer. Now, this is where it gets a little bit interesting because you see this, this roll speed in here. So where does the roll speed come from? And again, where the roll speed comes from is, well, one, the pro rider went to the brakes later, and two, he used the brakes and then actually got off the brakes a little bit sooner. And that's where the roll speed came from. So it doesn't look like much, and, and we talk about as this, as this sport, um, as you get to the sharper edge, it gets harder and it gets, the, um, it gets way more subtle. This is a great example of that, is it doesn't look like much, but on track, it is, it is fairly huge. Um, coming off that corner, you can actually see where towards the end of the corner is that the pro rider and the, and the other rider got to about the same speed, but because the pro rider was able to get to uh, open the throttle, not necessarily sooner, but he was able to open the, the throttle quicker and get to wide open throttle sooner, that's where all of that speed came from. So, and then of course they're going to, the, they're actually getting off the throttle at about the same point, but there's a lot more speed coming into that corner when that happens. Brake graph as well, right? You just see the subtleties of the pro rider getting off the brakes slightly earlier. So he's a little bit more defined on that brake graph. It's more of the shark fin brake graph that we talk about. Gets on the brakes, gets it released, and then that's where that amount of roll speed is as well. Then we start to see in between some of these shorter corners, pro riders getting to full throttle, even if it's for a millisecond, um, he's, he's doing it. Backs it up with a little bit more brakes um, and, and trending, trending through that. So, Good job here on the on the uh, other rider. He gets the full throttle there as well. Um, of course, the pro rider started off with a little bit a little bit more speed. So again, we see the speed here. This additional speed. They almost started off from the same point, but because the pro rider got to wide open throttle for a lot longer time, that's where that additional speed comes from. And this is where again starts to get interesting. Is the the amateur rider used way more brake pressure, and that's where that speed dropped off right there. So again, this is the subtleties of, uh, of, this, of this sport. Um, let me clear that off. Coming into the next section, both get to wide open throttle at about the same time, um, but because of the way the brake graph was, he's, the pro rider start, started off with more speed. And you can see just this little bit of holding the throttle that much more longer with wide open, that never underestimate that delta between acceleration and deceleration. It just, the, it just compounds dramatically. So that's really where you see a big part of the lap is the pro riders holding the throttle on longer 
gets it pointed more deliberately and is back to it sooner. And that's really where that speed, that speed comes from. So as we look through some of these other corners, um, we see a lot of uh, a lot of that trend as well, where it's it's interesting that the amateur rider is using a little bit more brake pressure and sometimes more brake pressure earlier. And that's what overslows some of that corner. And I realize that, you know, it's it's a it's a millisecond here and there, but that's the difference. It it just extrapolates it itself. So big difference right here in this corner, huge difference in brake pressure. And again, you can see the speed difference right there. Um, big one right here, you can't quite see it on the graph, was uh, pro rider holding the throttle wide open in this entire section. And you can see the difference in the speed right there. And there's, there's quite a bit of time right there. So again, how we look at data. And when we, we would look at data, it's we would use the, the, um, the time reference at the bottom. And even this one's a little bit more of a, of a cumulative um, uh, time. Uh, difference. It's just not one spot doesn't necessarily glare out as much. But again, when you look at this, you can see the time does come up here a little bit more and it comes up here a little bit more. So we would concentrate a little bit more on those on those um, sections first, as well as being a little bit more deliberate with initial break. So we weren't so making sure that we got to too much initial break too early uh, and overslowing the corner as well. So yeah, there's by tweaking these little things, um, the time is there. And it's, it's much easier to see where the time is there when we, when we do this, instead of saying, well, gosh, his bike is faster than me, or um, um, he, gets on the, he just gets on the throttle harder than I do. Well, that just doesn't tell quite the whole story. Uh, and having data like this is just fantastic. Uh, that allows us to really dive into the nuance it without having to uh, essentially say uh, a, a, Hail, a Hail Mary to, uh, to go faster. So, all right, there you go. There's some uh, fun ways to look at data with, um, uh, in this case, a pro rider versus a, a very quick uh, amateur uh, racer as well. So, all right, thanks.